It's a new week, which means we got a couple new additions to the Brave Arsenal, and this week that includes the addition of an old fan favorite, the very first S-tier raid weapon in the history of Destiny 2, the Midnight Coup. And I'm going to be completely honest here, I went into working on this review with the expectation that I was going to dislike Midnight Coup and not have a lot of good things to say about it. I was completely wrong. I've also heard a lot of Midnight Coup slander in the last 24 hours, and I won't, I won't stand for it. This thing is seriously an impressive firearm in both PvE and in PvP. And today, I'm going to take some time to break it down and talk about why this hand cannon is absolutely worth your time and effort to farm. So let's get into it. All right, we're going to cover the base stats, and we're going to compare those to the competition. We'll talk perks and god rolls for both PvE and PvP. And I'll make some recommendations for the best rules to look for in each scenario. So first, let's talk base stats, starting with the range, because this is one of the things I hear the most complaints about. The base range on the coup is 40, which, admittedly, that's pretty low. Pretty low in the family. It's not, like, egregiously low, you know, compared to Ostringer with, uh, you know, 46 base range on Ostringer. You know, that's a 140 that's widely regarded as being exceptional. But here's the thing. The coup basically offsets that difference by having accurized rounds for plus 10 range in that mag column, while Ostringer can only get plus 5 range in the mag column. Compare that 40 range, compare that also to the Rose, which has 43 base range. The coup sitting at 40, it's not unusable. I've seen people on Twitter complaining that it has quote unquote no range, but you can literally get an additional 30 range between the barrel mag and masterwork. Well, you technically can get 35, but I wouldn't recommend it. I'd go with 30. And then you can get even more range with explosive payload and opening shot, a combination which I do in fact have, and you will see some gameplay with that roll in the background footage. All in all, it's pretty easy to get the base range of your coup up to 65 or 70, which is more than adequate. And then you have even more options to add on top of that if range is your thing. Let's move on to stability. The Midnight Coup has 45 stability. That's the same as Rose, but it's considerably less than the Ostringer's uh, 59. But that being said, the stability on the Midnight Coup can basically be a non-issue with the inclusion of one perk, Zen Moment, in the second column. More on that later. But it's the rest of the stats where the Midnight Coup starts to really differentiate itself from the pack. The Midnight Coup is absolutely stacked. I mean, it is stacked with stats that improve what we commonly refer to as weapon feel, right? How a gun feels is largely determined by things like handling, reload speed, aim assist, airborne effectiveness, recoil patterns. The Midnight Coup is at the top of the class in like all those things. It's got 60 base handling. That is a ton. Compare that to Ace of Spades, you know, 40. That's 20 or less. Or Eyes Luna, 49. Ostringer, 47. Kept Confidence, 45. You can see how 60 is definitely a standout value for 140 hand cannons. The only competition here is Rose, which also has 60. I think it's related to the fact that both of these weapons used to be 150 hand cannons when that was a thing, and high handling was sort of a hallmark characteristic of that family but the coup feels extremely responsive and zippy in a fight, and that absolutely matters. It makes it very fun to get scrappy with it in PvP, you know, get up close, swap weapons, throw knives, stuff like that. I was having a riot using this gun in PvP. Then we've got the 56 reload speed, which again is exceptional. Most 140s have 10 to 16 reload speed less than that. The Rose is close to the same with 55, but again, this helps the gun feel better with less downtime in a fight reloading the weapon. Then we've got aim assist, which is, uh, guys, it's absolutely insane. It's 90. It's freaking 90. Ostringer is just 75, Ace of Spades 70, Ice Luna is super high in this area, but it's still 80, which is 10 less. Rose is close with 85, but again, it's less than the coup. And finally, we have airborne effectiveness, which is 24 on the Midnight Coup. That is best in class for 140s. Rose is close with 20, but again, it's still less than the coup. I may as well mention that the Midnight Coup has a mag size of 12, which again is best in class, meaning you're reloading less and shooting more. It's all about that weapon feel. So between the best handling in class, best aim assist in class, best AE in class, best reload speed in class, we've got a 140 hand cannon that feels absolutely incredible to use. 
But TV, what about the 80 recoil direction? Well, recoil direction doesn't really work the way it used to. We have set recoil patterns now. The Midnight Coup pops up to the right slightly, which is not uncommon at all, but I haven't really had much trouble with that. And frankly, it's like completely negated by my favorite role right now. Like check this three tap out, for example. This is using Zen Moment. You can see how each successive shot kicks less and less. It goes big kick, medium kick, tiny kick for the third shot. And I take zero flinch, zero flinch to the auto rifle that's shooting me because Zen Moment is kicking in. We'll talk more about that in the perks section, which we're gonna move on to now. So for barrels and mags, you've got some great options here. As I noted before, the coup has accurized rounds, so you can get up to 35 range between your barrel, mag, and masterwork. Although I recommend passing on full bore, it takes away stability and handling, and we really want to keep those things so that we have that, we preserve that weapon feel. So I recommend hammer forged, accurized rounds, and ranged masterwork. Although you could do small bore instead of hammer forged. Small bore gives 14 stat points while hammer forged only gives 10, but it splits it up evenly between range and stability. I've got a 4.5 out of 5 on my favorite coup right now. It's got my preferred perk combination with a ranged masterwork, accurized rounds, but then, like I said, small bore for seven range, seven stability, but I don't mind that so much. Hammer Forged would only increase the range by three at that point, which is you know, basically negligible. And gaining seven more stability certainly doesn't hurt. But let's talk main perks here. In the first column, we've got Enlightened Action, which is honestly, it's a great perk. More handling, more reload speed when dealing damage is certainly a great feeling perk. We have Attrition Orbs, which is garbage. Moving Target, which is incredible. Moving Target grants 10 aim assist and faster strafe speeds while aiming down the sights, as long as you're moving, which you should always be moving, so it should always be on. That means Moving Target caps the aim assist out at 100, max AA, when you're dueling. Like, hello people, <laughs> that's borderline busted. Then we've got Explosive Payload, which makes your bullet impact the target twice and the explosive part of that damage is immune to damage drop off. So you're essentially getting free range on the hand cannon. Then we've got shoot to loot, which I would pass on in both PVE and PVP. I know some people are like, what? Uh, more on that in a second. We've got Firefly and Outlaw. Outlaw was on the original coup, but I say pass on it. You know, my PVE brother, I think are freaking out right now. They're like, you said pass on shoot to loot. You said pass on Outlaw. But listen, you've got Firefly on this thing now. Firefly explosions in PvE are going to trigger one for all in a single explosion oftentimes. One for all is in the second column and it grants 35% more damage for 10 seconds. That's massive. And you can refresh it super easily to basically have constant uptime. Add minor spec and you're just gonna be absolutely shredding ads in PvE with this thing. I know because I have this role. It's filthy. And the cool thing about this perk combination of Firefly and one for all is that a Firefly, the damage, the explosion, is actually gonna get buffed by one for all. It's not just the bullet that's getting the, the, the damage buff from one for all. The explosion of Firefly is gonna get that bonus as well. So they kind of feed off of one each other. Firefly can proc one for all, one for all increases the damage of Firefly, and it's like this really cool loop. But moving on to the second column, we've got Desperate Measures, which I would pass on. We've got Opening Shot, which is always good. Frenzy, which I would pass on. One for all, which I just talked about. Zen moment, which I mean, just I right, put it down. <laughs> End the conversation there is literally the only perk you should want for PVP with uh, opening shot a distant second place. And then kinetic tremors, which is a great PVE perk and rampage, which is a hard pass for me considering everything else that we've got. So let me talk about Zen moment for a moment. A lot of the gameplay in the background is with this roll right here, Zen Moment Moving Target. I've got max 100 aim assist, but I've also got huge stability in my duels and less incoming flinch. So just notice some of these three taps as I slow down the gameplay for you, you can visibly see Zen Moment kicking in while each shot I take gets more and more stable. First shot kicks, second shot kicks less, third shot moves a tiny bit, that's it but I'm also running a backup mag mod for 14 round magazine, and I can just kill guy after guy after guy if I need to and keep Zen Moment Train rolling. I'm not kidding when I say that between the best in class weapon feel stats on the coup, as well as the max aim assist, as well as the Zen Moment stability, I mean, there's just not a lot of hand cannons in the game that feel as good as this specific roll feels. This is the literal god roll on the coup in PvP. But as I mentioned earlier, my second place for PvP is the uh, all range and then explosive payload opening shot roll. That one feels really good too. 
I used it a lot in skirmish today, had a lot of success with it. You really can't go wrong there, but I can't help but feel like the Zen moment moving target combo is just light years ahead of everything else. And that's having used both options. In PvE, my favorite combo is Firefly and One for All. Although Kinetic Tremors and Shoot to Loot is a nice combo too. I should also mention the Origin trait is also nice for uh, just having grenade uptime or melee, depending on whether you're a light or dark subclass. But it was nice to see my uh, Incendiary Grenade uh, getting a little bit of energy with every final blow I got. So to wrap everything up here, the Midnight Coup was never a good PvP hand cannon back in the day. And anyone who told you that it was is lying. It was a PvE powerhouse, pre-power creep. But Bungie did something really special with the coup this time around, giving it access to rule-breaking stats that outperform everything else in the family in terms of weapon feel, while also including perks that make dueling with this hand cannon feel buttery smooth in a way few hand cannons can hope to achieve. While the recluse left me feeling a little let down, the Midnight Coup has far exceeded my expectations and earned itself a permanent spot in my personal armory. I highly recommend that you take the time to farm for some exceptional rolls on this thing and try it out for yourself. I think you'll see what I'm talking about pretty quickly, and hopefully you'll love it just as much as I do. Thanks as always for watching the video today. Feel free to leave a like on it only if you enjoyed it, and consider subscribing for additional Destiny 2 content. Be warm and well-fed, my friends, and I hope to catch you in the Crucible.